Good morning, everybody, and welcome at this virtual seminar organized by Essencia and Dineas. I hope you had a nice cup of coffee to start a day and that you're ready for an inspirational moment this morning. Theme of the day is clear, you can see it behind me, accelerating innovative railroad transport with a focus on the chemical industry in Antwerp. Ladies and gentlemen, this virtual seminar is the closing event of a three-year program run by Linnaeus together with 11 partners from six different countries and with the support of the European Commission. We have a quite filled uh, agenda for today. As you can see here on the screen, how are we going to proceed? We will start, uh, first of all, with Philip van den Bos presenting the key deliverables of the project, followed by a virtual debate between top representatives of the chemical industry, on the one hand, and on the other hand, people from the port of Antwerp. Afterwards, we'll leave the floor to our policymakers in four short videos. Then we'll talk about collaboration between the different modes of transport with Philippe de Graaf. That's the general manager of Febitra. Time to move to the European perspective with two people. Clemens First, chairman of the European Rail Freight Forward Coalition, and Carlo Borghini, executive director of the European Rail Innovation Agency. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, we will close this seminar with the key takeaways of Geert Powell, CEO of Linnaeus, and Yves Verschuren, Managing Director of Essentia. Ladies and gentlemen, please notice that we have a chat box live, and you can ask all your questions in it during the conference, so please do so. Use that opportunity. We'll come back to you during the conference or in the days to come. And now we are really ready to start off, and therefore I'm more than pleased to welcome on stage Philip van den Bos. Thank you, uh, Indra, and I'm glad to take you through the results of our project during the last uh, three years. But before diving in, it makes sense to have a look, to have a look back and why we founded this project. We all know that our current transport is not a sustainable model. With our reliance on 75% on trucking, we are causing a number of negative effects. Eh? The 10% CO2 emissions, we lose three work weeks per driver per year in stuck in traffic, and there are over 45,000 of casualties due to air pollution in Europe. Numbers which are probably underestimated. And for more, we expect this decade a growth in Europe of transport by over 30%. So, model shift to rail is critically necessary. It is the only way to safeguard our climate, mobility and health targets. With this being said, what are we going to model shift? Typically, rail is for larger cargo. Let's say that the, the container is more or less the smallest cargo that we are able to handle. But can we go smaller than that wagon load? For example, what about pallets? Another question for the project was, how can we develop hubs and rail hubs to make them more attractive for a model shift? From that, we made our two research questions of this project and the two pillars. The first pillar is about the less than wagon load and the second pillar is about developing multimodal freight villages. On the less than wagon load, we looked at how can we shift and is there a model for shifting pallets to rail? Is there a model for the so-called mixed trains? And can we make handling of pallets more easy and more attractive? On the second pillar, on the multimodal freight village, we answered a number of questions to see which services can we add to a freight village to make it more adapted for a model shift. And finally, finally, we also looked at the environmental impact of implementing such a solution. Let's start with the less than wagon load. Is there a potential for shifting pallets to rail? Yes, an economically viable less than, network, less, than network, less than wagon load network can be developed. Research from Transcare showed that there is a potential for over 30 million tons of cargo per year. Nevertheless, it remains a complex supply chain to run and you will, have to need, you will need partners at both sides and sufficient partners to make it work. What about mixed trains? In most current 
rail flows, conventional and intermodal flows are not, not mixed. And you see that between several European regions, flows are not dense enough to make a rail connection economically viable. Or else that the service levels which can be offered to potential uh, rail customers is not sufficiently high, and specifically on the frequency. And thus making such a rail solution not attractive. The Technical University of Delft, under the supervision of Professor Rob Konings, performed in-depth analysis on whether combined uh, offerings, those the so-called mixed trains, could be attractive and could be a viable economical solution. Their conclusions are clear. Distance is not the only criterion which determines whether a certain geographical relationship is interesting to develop. Also, physical uh, situations on lieu and the exact combination of intermodal and conventional volumes determine whether it is interesting to develop such a mixed train. They also analyzed whether there is a potential, whether, uh, which, which criteria customers use uh, in, de in deciding for a certain solution. And maybe surprising, but not price, but reliability, re reliability and a minimal frequency of three times per week is the most dominant criteria that they will use. Finally, they did also a cost comparison between the mixed solution on the one hand, and they compared it with conventional, with multimodal, and even tracking solutions. Their, model showed, uh, their modeling showed out that mixed trains can be a dominant and can be a good solution. But they are typically well uh, suited for small, conventional, and intermodal cargo. So when we would apply those mixed trains, it's typically for new markets where we want to enter before developing uh, direct train services. So yes, there is definitely a model shift of pallets to be done. Of course, we all know that the proof of model shift is in the handling. The transloading from pallets into a train, just like for containers, requires specific handling techniques. And they should, of course, be cost-effective, efficient, reliable, and if possible, automated. And the project is therefore proud to announce you the automated, automatic wagon loading system. During this project, Ankara, Technical University of Kosice, VTG, Zostravna and Linias developed this so-called AWLS, which allows to reduce the handling cost of uh, cargoes which are smaller than a single wagon. The AWLS enables us to uh, handle those uh, cargoes uh, cost efficiently and flexible and even up to a few pallets. Furthermore, and this is very interesting, it can also be used for uh, types of cargo which are now not really dealt with by the uh, rail sector. We are talking about large beverage streams, chemical isobins, or even big bags. What could we do more than just show the system? But this is for after this presentation. Let's move on to the second question about the multimodal freight villages. How can we make them more attractive for modal shift? Are these services applicable for Antwerp? And can they be transferred to other regions in Europe? In close collaboration with a number of project partners and in a continuous feedback loop with Essentia, the project evaluated a number of solutions to be developed. We looked at a truck parking, we looked at an RID parking, we analyzed the M2 depot function, we looked at the feasibility of developing rail connected warehouses, and finally, we also looked at a repair center and cleaning station on the main hub in Antwerp. What are the conclusions from these business cases? Currently, Linea's main hub allows trucks to drop off their cargo, which is then shuttled via the train to, into the harbor. The question was, if we add a truck parking to that uh, offering, would it make the main hub more attractive? The business case looks only attractive when very extensive services are being added. This means from ranging to very high safety standards into even hotel accommodation. Since we know that in the meanwhile, similar offerings are being offered by the market, this looks like a very risky undertaking. 
The second is about the ARID parking, which looks and which is still considered by all partners as being very interesting. It would provide, for example, additional balancing possibilities of storage capacity for the chemical sector. This being said, there is little support for the business case amongst the main stakeholders. And furthermore, after even thorough analysis, it showed out that there are still uh, a number of legal and safety constraints which need to be overcome. The third service concerns the empty depot function. This clearly could bring added value to the main hub. It would render the left and right bank operation more flexible since trucks would not only have to count on new full loads when dropping off a container at the main hub. Nevertheless, there is an imbalance between the land use and the added value being created. So the, 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 the chance of developing that are not that big. This leaves two other services which look really interesting. And the first one is the reconnected warehouse. The number of those warehouses within the Antwerp region is limited, and real estate developers do not yet see the benefits of adding a rail connection to their warehouse offerings into the market. Our analysis, analysis showed that a warehouse could be profitable as of a size of 30,000 square meters. Of course, the investments go along with it. The last and most, last and most promising is the developing a cleaning and repair station at the main hub for chemical wagons in Antwerp. Our partner Trafico played an important role in defining as well the functional requirements as a designing layout for such a solution. Our market analysis showed that this is clearly a business case to be developed there. Currently already the cleaning stations are suffering from waiting, waiting times and are even experiencing queues to be cleaned. The business case for such a cleaning station is very positive if we uh, take some conditions into account. First one, it should provide contemporary uh, cleaning techniques compliant with the most recent environmental legislation. Secondly, it should be able to treat all kinds of products and not limit itself to mainstream products. Typically, flaring is one of those uh, services which should be needed. And finally, the station should be open not only for wagons, but also for typical tank containers. Our volume and market potential analysis has shown out that it cannot be made profitable just relying on wagons, but also it needs tank uh, containers. The project partners expressed their strong belief in such a repair station. It would not only make the main hub itself interesting, but it would also strengthen the chemical cluster in Antwerp. The last research question regarded the transferability of those services to other rail hubs. This was research conducted by ISC in Naples. They also proved that the services developed for Antwerp are able to be developed in NOLA, Italy. There is a small difference. The, um, the warehouses is more profitable in Italy and the chemical cluster is more beneficial to the chemical cluster in Antwerp. But this has to do with the typical setup of those two clusters. Allow me to conclude. There is a potential for less than wagon load model shift with mixed trains if you are able to deal with complexity. One of those ways of dealing with the complexity is building the automatic wagon loading system. It is a very positive uh, case. There is a very positive case for the environment where we see that we can generate a benefit between 2 and 10% depending on which external cost we are looking at. Extending the Antwerp main hub with value added service would strengthen the Antwerp uh, chemical cluster. There is one thing. A multimodal fridge uh, village in Antwerp North will materialize only due to a joint vision and strategic collaboration by all stakeholders. And all stakeholders is including the port authorities, the Flemish government, and of course the chemical cluster itself. Only then, all issues like permits, access, or even owner rights can be solved successfully. And finally, we have proven with this project that we are able to transfer these solutions to other hubs in Europe. Thank you.
Thank you, Philip. And um, that's a very ambitious program. You will agree on that. And Philip, stay with me because there is one question for you in our chat box. And that's very simple. It's on that automatic wagon loading system. Very simple question. When will this be commercially available? Currently, uh, the, the, the tests have been done. So it is, it is applicable uh, in the market. Uh, it's now a matter of uh, putting it into concrete supply chains within concrete customers, when also further automation can be taken place. There are first commercial contacts with some customers, not typical uh, real customers, but more uh, other type of industries. And if those uh, talks are successful, then we are confident that we will have a system within foreseeable time in the market. Okay, thank you very much. And you promised it to the people to show a real life demo. So, ladies and gentlemen, watch with us. AWLS is an automatic train wagon lead system om daarmee kleinere ladingen dan een hele vrachtwagenlading in één keer in de trein te kunnen laden. Het is uniek omdat je zowel kunt laden en lossen met het systeem. Het systeem kan ook overal toepasbaar gemaakt worden. Dus het is niet gebonden aan de trein, maar vooral aan het logistiek centrum. Dat dat zodanig is ingericht dat het systeem daar kan werken. Het AWLS systeem of het Automated Wagon Load System is heel belangrijk. Waarom? We merken dat de gemiddelde lading steeds kleiner wordt en daarop dient het spoor een antwoord te bieden dat even efficiënt is als andere modaliteiten. En we willen ook met dit systeem, het AWLS systeem, nieuwe markten aanboren om op die manier deelpartijen, gepalletiseerde goederen, te modelschiften van de truck naar het spoor. We hebben een prototype ontwikkeld dat is speciaal gemaakt om zogenaamde industriepelleten vanuit ofwel een automatisch warehouse systeem ofwel een vrachtwagen in één keer in de wagon te kunnen laden. Neem nu bijvoorbeeld de chemiesector. We zien deze wagon hier op de achtergrond. Een wagon heeft een capaciteit om 60 van deze containers te laden. Dat betekent een 60.000 liter die op die manier in gepalletiseerde IBC containers kan vervoerd worden. Ook binnen de retailsector, waar gepalletiseerde goederen frequent in omloop zijn, kunnen we daarop een antwoord bieden. Een model shift is belangrijk omdat er steeds meer files komen en er steeds meer problemen met de CO2-uitstoot zijn. Daarom krijgen we steeds meer vragen van klanten om van vrachtwagentransport naar spoortransport te gaan. Dankzij dit nieuwe systeem kunnen we een zeer kostefficiënte oplossing aanbieden aan onze klanten. Omdat het aantal handlings wat in het verleden manueel diende te gebeuren met een tussenkomst van een forklift, bijvoorbeeld palet per palet laden van truck naar wagon, kunnen we met dit systeem tegelijkertijd ineens 15 paletten transporteren van truck naar systeem zonder dat er nog een manuele tussenkomst is van een handler of een operator. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to cope with the future, we certainly need a modal shift. And let's see at the industry how they are looking at the future. In my panel, ladies and gentlemen, Tom van Poon, Senior Manager at BASF Antwerp, Niels van Vliet, CEO, Railport Antwerp, and William Moyerson, CEO of ArcelorMittal Logistics. Gentlemen, when everything is going all right, we will see you now. Yes, hi, welcome in this panel. Tom, let me start with you. What role does rail play today in the supply chain, chain of BASF? Okay, so BASF is a, a large chemical player also in the port of Antwerp, of course, and there the rail is a very important transport mode for BASF. So uh, on a daily basis, we have one to two trains going to our sites in Ludwigshaven and Antwerp. So that's a big portion. Then, of course, we have a lot of single wagon load transport throughout Europe and also in the port of Antwerp. And mm -hmm. apart of, from that, BSF is a strong believer in intermodal transports. We had our uh, in, in installed Combinant terminal 10 years ago. And for instance, for our liquid bulk uh, transports, approximately 40% is going already intermodal. 40%. But Today is about how to accelerate the railroad transport and what hurdles do we have to take, in your opinion? 
Yeah. yeah, BSF is a, a strong believer, I said, and we also see a, a growth in the coming years apart from the hurdles. So we'll have production expansion resulting in more rail transport uh, because of the low water levels on the Rhine. We also have more rail transports and we will keep on doing this as a risk management uh, topic. And also in the intermodal, we see different destinations becoming more interesting, like the north of France, uh, certain parts of Germany, and even trains to China is something that, that we are piloting for the moment. Okay, this is going uh, difficult. The hurdle certainly on a short term. Um, the volume loss due to Corona is certainly a hurdle. We see many train corrections. Can you hear me? Can yeah, hear me? now we hear you again. Because it's better? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I said, so um, Corona is a difficulty. On, on a yes, because we, we see less volumes on the market, meaning that they, they are driving less trains. Less trains means uh, not a, 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 a better service, of course. The service is going down. This will result in even fewer volumes, and this is a vicious circle that is very dangerous, and it needs to be tackled on the short term, I think. And okay. then for, for the conventional rail transport, we see um, still reliability, transparency as, as key hurdles um, to further expand. Um, okay. Certainly. Thank you very much. Niels, what's the role of uh, the Railport Antwerp in all this story? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the role of Railport is as a neutral player uh, to be the link between the various rail activities within uh, the Port of Antwerp, acting as a bridge uh, between the rail transport operators, the rail infrastructure manager, the port companies, the shippers and terminals as the model split is something which we create together. Uh, the second focus is to create the necessary transparency and to stimulate collaboration between all uh, different parties. Yeah, I hear you say bridge, more transparency, so we need more collaboration, I understand. How do you look at that? Definitely. I think the, the shareholdership of, of uh, Railport already demonstrates the way we look uh, to the way we need to achieve the model split. Um, Railport is a daughter company of the Port of Antwerp, but as well with participation of MLSO, Essentia and Alpha Port Foca. Uh, it's together, uh, in a collaboration, we can achieve the model split and not separately, not as a port, but as a port community. Therefore, every chain within the, the logistics chain has to take its responsibility and contribute to achieve this model split. It sounds logical. So why isn't it happening already, this collaboration? Uh, I think we, we are on a good way, uh, but the model shift starts, in my view, with a mental shift. Um, mm -hmm. And we really need to rethink, we need to think rail. Climate change is affect, traffic jams are affect. We, we experience them every day, probably now with Corona a little bit less, but they will come up again. So we need to take concrete actions now. And mm -hmm. therefore we we welcome also the idea to create a master plan for rail for Belgium in order to focus really on this model split in all aspects. Yeah, William, we hear here that we need a mental shift and ArcelorMittal is already a heavy user of rail. How do you look at a mental shift? Do you agree? Uh, um, yes, indeed. I think it's uh, very much a mental shift. Of course, in our case, it's often a, mandate, it's a little bit dictated by the volumes or by the type of goods as well. Um, but nevertheless, the mental shift is, is needed. But I think it's, uh, our, it's a task of, uh, as um, Neil said, from the community, uh, and in particular for the Port of Antwerp, it's a, that uh, the community facilitates enough the whole rail operations, uh, make it 21st century proof, uh, which is uh, far from that uh, from the moment, uh, at the moment, I think. Mm -hmm. What do you, uh, can new technologies help? Because innovation is key as well, besides collaboration. Well, innovation will always go through, uh, let's say, in, in, in a better track and trace, a better monitoring, a better follow up of what happens. Uh, offering possibilities to plan, to, to, to look ahead and not to have to wait until the train arrives. And, 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 mm -hmm. um, but no, it suggests to have much better control of the operations and a reliability. And you know that certain operations, they take time, that's for sure, and then no one will deny that, but only take a limited time. And you know in advance, and it goes smoothly. We lose far too much time today in a series of inefficiencies uh, 
um, which makes the whole uh, rail uh, route basically unreliable time-wise. Unreliable. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a big word. That's a big uh, issue. Yeah. Okay, but we were looking at the prototype, uh, the automatic wagon loading system. How could that help? How do you look at that? As an industry, I don't see immediately um, what we could do with it. I think this is typically for people who are concentrating in less than wagon load operations. And, and, and so all kind of NVOCC to compare it with uh, the, the maritime part operators. I think for them, probably there is certainly something in it. But yeah. as an industry, yeah. I think it's a too complicated system to have it interfering with your standard operations. If I look at the mill or if I, if I look at the normal port terminal, yeah, you need not, yeah. dedicated operations. But I understand for a lot of other industries this could be helpful. Perhaps I ask the same question to Tom. Tom, this uh, automatic wagon loading system, how do you look at it? Yes, as I said before, BSF is a large site with a lot of uh, bulk liquid volume, so the, the number of packed goods is very limited, certainly less than wagon load packed goods. So I, as an expert, I think it's an interesting project, but for BSF, we are more, more focused on the liquid part, but we do have some interest in the other uh, part of the study where we talk about the rail hub. So certain services we are already using, like repair, like storage, but uh, certainly the topic mentioned about cleaning and repair, combining this, this would uh, be beneficial for BSF as well. And for sure we will, uh, will we use that. Yeah, what are the now we are driving. Yeah, yeah go ahead, can, go ahead. Yeah, we would, now we are driving to other cleaning stations and of course these are the empty kilometers which we can avoid in that case. Yeah, and that is exactly what we want to avoid. What other promising innovations can you see to speed up this modal shift uh, within BASF? Um, we already talked about digitalization. William mentioned this. Another topic which is a hot topic in BASF since several years, we believe a lot in containerization. So we go away from traditional rail cars and we, are, we um, implemented a new type of bigger rail cars which, are, which can be divided from the rail car. So in, in Ludwigshafen we have a new operating model and we have an automated warehouse where we can store these tank containers and they are now driving throughout Europe. Um, we can also have a better utilization rate and we also want to achieve these mixed trains combining intermodal and conventional into one train. Okay. Um, this um, is certainly an innovation that we are believing in. So the new multimodal hub, William, where should the focus be on infrastructure, flexibility, innovation, or do you see it as a combination of all of it? It, it can only work if it's a combination of all of it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you, we need uh, the willingness and um, uh, I hope that this is available of all parties and, and get away from, let's say, let's call it a little bit old-fashioned approaches, uh, but work together. That's, that, that's mm -hmm. the only uh, condition. The only way forward. Let's look at yes, what the Vice Major of the Port of Antwerp, Annick de Ridder, is saying to that. Watch with me. Het sporttransport is voor ons Antwerpshaven natuurlijk enorm belangrijk. Als we zien dat 70% van alle sporttransport via havens verloopt. En voor de Antwerpse haven betekent dat op jaarbasis 22 miljoen ton die van of naar de haven gaat via het spoor. Dan zetten we daar enorm op in. Dat, dat spreekt voor zich. En daarom is het Les Dan Wagon Load project zo belangrijk en ook heel interessant. Het komt erop neer dat we echt gaan kijken specifiek voor de chemie. Uh, wat uh, er mogelijk is aan verdere automatisering uh, van de processen, van de laadprocessen. Uh, er wordt ook nagedacht over een aparte logistieke zone, waar men echt, omdat het zo'n aparte producten ook zijn uh, binnen de industrie, waar we echt gaan kijken hoe er optimaal kan uh, gewerkt worden op parkings, hoe de bewaking uh, optimaal kan verlopen, hoe ook de cleaning heel belangrijk uh, wordt aangepakt. Dus ik denk dat dat een heel interessant project is um, waar we verder mee aan de slag kunnen, kunnen gaan. Vervoer via spoor zal enkel maar belangrijker worden ook uh, in de toekomst. En ik denk uh, samen met Essentia en andere belangrijke partners dat we daarop 
uh, opnieuw enorm op zullen moeten inzetten. Wij streven naar een uh, verdubbeling van, de aan, van het aandeel van het spoor, uh, van 7% naar 15%. Er liggen nog heel wat uitdagingen op ons te wachten. Uh, we doen dat natuurlijk samen als haven met uh, de private partners, maar ook met uh, de Vlaamse en de federale overheid. Denk maar aan uh, zaken zoals de elektrificatie tot aan de terminals. Uh, het faciliteren ook van de 750 meter uh, treinen, maar ook uh, belangrijke investeringen die nog op stapel staan rond ECA, de extra containercapaciteit. Daar willen we natuurlijk ook zien dat die terminals ontsloten zullen kunnen worden uh, voor het spoorverkeer. Uh, Wij zullen dat als haven en stad natuurlijk uh, grondig bekijken en, uh, en mee proberen te faciliteren. Okay, what a strong engagement that was. She explicitly said that she wants to double rail capacity. That's promising. Niels, how do you look at it? Uh, we, your mic is uh, not Sorry, on. I can only yeah. be happy and, uh, about this, this message and, and confirm what she's uh, saying. I think rail is an essential part uh, for the port of Antwerp. So we have to focus on it to be cope with the growth of the port and to have a sustainable and, and good uh, way of transport to the hinterland. Yeah. We heard a lot about the less and wagon load study. What do you think about it as an expert? I think, think all innovation in, in rail is, 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 uh, is, is more than welcome. We can learn a lot from, from other uh, industries as well. Rail is most of the time still based on very old traditional ways of working. And we need all innovation like GPS tracking, automated coupling for, for wagons to 45 feet, tank containers like mentioned by Tom, uh, driverless uh, trains and so on. I think innovation can make rail far more attractive uh, than it is already today. Yeah. Okay, Tom, we heard a lot of promises. What do you expect from our policymakers? What can they do to tackle the hurdles? Uh, yeah, I think some hurdles were already mentioned. I think um, we need a strong engagement to really move ahead. I think the, the hurdles mentioned are not the new ones, but we really need to move ahead now in, in tackling these hurdles. Um, maybe one hurdle that was not really mentioned today is also the, the access to the port of Antwerp, to the to the chemical cluster on the right bank, um, where the Lilo Brug is no longer accessible. And this is a high priority topic also for BSF mm -hmm. um, to have a second entrance to the to the chemical cluster on the right bank via rail. Yeah, accessibility and mobility, of course. William, amongst our virtual audience today, there is a high-level representation of the rail sector and public authorities. What message would you like to bring to those CEOs and policymakers? I think I can only repeat, let's make sure we can work together. I think the, 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 the innovations as such are not um, very special. I think uh, things are, a lot of things can already improve by just, let's say, uh, agreeing on a common policy and a, and a common goal. Mm -hmm. That the co uh, could help a lot, I think. Yeah, Niels, the common goal is clear and a call to action to collabor collaborate more, that's clear. And you are going to be that bridge or one of the bridges. That, uh, that's at least the goal. So I think we, we have a good start but we have uh, still a lot of things to do in order to achieve uh, the ambitious goals we have as, as of 15% model split. Yeah. Okay, Tom, uh, last question for you. What's your key takeaway of this uh, debate and today what you've seen of the study? Um, I see that, that there's a lot of attention to this topic and that um, there are innovations coming up. And I think we have to use this momentum then really to go ahead and to really change something about the rail industry and, and to via via railport as a as a as a tool also we can achieve this collaboration more and take, take concrete steps to move ahead together. It's a word that I've heard a lot during this conference. Yeah. Uh, collaboration, that is key. Thank yeah. you, everybody, uh, gentlemen, for your most valuable insights. Okay, thank you very much. See you perhaps later in real life. Okay, let's move to the political aspect, ladies and gentlemen, of the whole thing. And therefore, we ask the opinion of three of our ministers of mobility. We will see and hear uh, François Bello, Philippe Henry, and Lydia Peters. Watch with us. Selon les prévisions, les volumes de transport de marchandises devraient augmenter de l'ordre de 24 à 25 % d'ici 2030. 
Bien entendu, le transport routier qui est dominant ne pourra jamais absorber tout cela et c'est la raison pour laquelle nous devons investir dans d'autres formes de transport, que ce soit le transport fluvial, mais surtout ferroviaire qui a plus de souplesse que le fluvial. Il est important d'établir un Master Rail Freight Belgium pour pouvoir répondre à ces demandes. Et des initiatives ont déjà été prises. Ainsi, euh, le gouvernement fédéral a dégagé un montant de 56 millions d'euros pour soutenir entre 2017 et 2020 les transports diffus et combinés. C'est un montant important, mais qu'il faut poursuivre. Ça termine fin 2020, nous sommes en affaires courantes et donc nous avons décidé au niveau du gouvernement de prolonger la mesure au moins jusqu'à fin 2021. Nous ne partons pas d'une feuille blanche. C'est ainsi que le gouvernement fédéral a déjà consacré 4,3 milliards au cours des cinq dernières années en investissement, auquel on a ajouté un milliard. Pour faire quoi Par exemple, pour Old London à la sortie du port d'Anvers. Nous avons aussi sollicité 5 milliards de moyens complémentaires pour poursuivre dans cette voie-là et notamment euh, sur les corridors importants euh, mer du Nord, Méditerranée et, et, et vers l'est de l'Europe, euh, de pouvoir euh, aménager des corridors pour accueillir les trains de 750 mètres de longueur. Par exemple, pour l'année 2020-2021, nous, nous avons instruit un dossier, mais qui n'est pas encore finalisé, pour réduire les redevances euh, d'usage du rail dans le cadre du Covid et peut-être pérenniser ce soutien au travers d'une action publique de réduction de la redevance qui est une forme de soutien essentiel pour le transport ferroviaire de marchandises. L'avenir de quoi s'est-il fait Je pense qu'en Belgique, il est, il est urgent, puisqu'on a une répartition des compétences, d'établir une vision interfédérale de la mobilité et notamment d'établir un plan ambitieux avec une vision forte pour le transport de marchandises par rail. Le transport marchandise est évidemment face à une révolution pour les prochaines années, certainement les dix prochaines années. Nous avons évidemment des objectifs climatiques tous à atteindre qui font que l'on doit réduire nos émissions de gaz à effet de serre, concrétiser donc un transfert modal du transport de la route vers la voie ferrée, le transport fluvial. 7% c'est l'objectif de la Wallonie que nous avons de, de transfert marchandises vers, vers la voie ferrée. C'est donc un objectif très très ambitieux. Ça nécessitera euh, d'envisager aussi de nouvelles possibilités avec les entreprises, que ce soit euh, du service euh, pour des plus petits transports, plus de flexibilité probablement. La Wallonie évidemment souhaite être très investie dans ces changements, euh, dans le, la préoccupation de, de tout le développement du fret. Nous avons évidemment un volet euh, marchandises à notre stratégie régionale de mobilité, à la vision FAST qui justement donne les objectifs wallons euh, à moyen terme, à long terme, de, de très forts transferts modal aussi bien pour le transfert des personnes euh, que pour le transport euh, marchandises. Donc ça veut dire que nous concrétisons ça dans des investissements au niveau des ports de Wallonie par exemple, au niveau euh, d'un soutien avec les entreprises, notamment avec des conventions de financement avec le fédéral pour aider les entreprises à réaliser les investissements nécessaires, notamment en termes de transbordement. Nous avons aussi du soutien au niveau de la recherche et de l'innovation. Et donc tout cela va aussi prochainement se traduire dans un plan d'action visant à mettre en œuvre ces objectifs de, de report modal du transport marchandises. La Wallonie souhaite évidemment y travailler de manière euh, euh, vraiment très impliquée avec les autres niveaux de pouvoir, avec les différents opérateurs dans un cadre européen. De logistieke sector is uiteraard een zeer belangrijke sector in Vlaanderen. Willen we echt onze naam als logistieke hub binnen Europa waarmaken, dan moeten we daar ten volle op inzetten. En dat doen we ook met deze Vlaamse regering. Hebben we effectief de ambitie vastgelegd dat we tegen 2030 echt kiezen voor die modal shift. Een modal shift van 30% richting spoor, richting water. We hebben daar de Vlaamse spoorstrategie. Een verhaal dat misschien al een tijdje meegaat, maar waar we toch zeker een nieuwe boost aan willen geven, samen uiteraard met de andere partners. Nu, vanuit Vlaanderen hebben we zeker een aantal belangrijke middelen daarvoor uitgetrokken om zodoende echt die modal shift kunnen bewerkstelligen. Opnieuw die modal shift richting water, maar zeker ook richting spoor en weg van de weg. Ik was onlangs nog in Gent, daar keek ik bijvoorbeeld heel specifiek 
natuurlijk de vraag van wanneer komt er hier nu het spoortraject Gent ter Neuzen. Er is wel degelijk een vraag naar. Er is ook de bereidheid van de logistieke sector om dat spoor effectief te gaan gebruiken, om het goederentransport daar over het spoor te laten doen. Dus wat dat betreft moeten we daar zeker de schouders onder steken. Aan Vlaamse zijde hebben we een bedrag van 11 miljoen euro daarvoor ter beschikking. Dus wat dat betreft, laat ons de schub in de grond steken. Zullen we maar zeggen, laat ons overgaan tot actie en laat ons zo snel, snel mogelijk investeren in heel die spoorontsluitingen, zodat er daar ook opnieuw die modal shift volledig kan bewerkstelligd worden. Well, that's a call for action, ladies and gentlemen, today. It seems that the truck has won the race between modalities, but nevertheless also the trucking sector is convinced of more collaboration. And that's why we will talk about it with Philippe de Graaf, uh, General Manager of Febitra. Welcome. Good morning. Well, that's an easy one. You're the winner on the road. You're the winner in the modal capacities and the modalities. How does the sector look at more collaboration? Because do you need it more? collaboration. Yes, I think it's true that uh, road transport is the absolute number one of the conventional transport modes. And that's not only the case in Belgium. This observation applies also to the, the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. The market share of road transport may vary sli very slightly from one country to another country but it fluctuates around the 75% 75%, that's so enormous. in the slides a few moments ago. Uh, do, we, do we want to transport 100% of all the goods? No, sure, certainly not. The time, there was a time in the past that road, rail and inland waterways were, were real enemies. Enemies. That's no longer the case today. Yeah. Uh, my members, road tr uh, transporters, have learned to think in terms of modal complementarity rather than in terms of modal competition. Explain that a little, modal all complementarity. Modes, all modes, we consider that all modes are partners hmm? and we think they have to focus on their strengths. And what and are the strengths? The strengths of road transport that are uh, the last mile the flexibility, the door-to-door -door. Mm -hmm. for a rail, is, these are the, the large volumes. And road haulers have already made the mental click. Now it's time to translate it into action. Into action. How we should do that one? There, there were uh, different solutions who, which were presented here, but there is still one problem we didn't discuss until yet, and that's the cost. Mm -hmm. When road haulers opt for multimodal solutions, then there is a problem that the multimodal solutions are very often too expensive, and for that reason, non-competitive to the roads. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important question. Who is going to pay for it? How do you see that solved? We, we have two, two things we would like to ask to the federal government or the regional governments, doesn't matter. The first thing is uh, financial incentives for transporters who invest in equipment, specific equipment or specific infrastructure, such as special trailers, uh, reach stackers, mm -hmm. uh, containers and so on. And the second thing is more an operational support in the form of a 40 euro handling check or handling voucher for transporters who shift a part of the goods from the road to the rail. A check of 40 euros, will that be enough? Will that solve the problem? We made uh, the calculation with Linneas and it should be enough. Yeah. And that's the government who should do that? One of our <laughs> governments, uh, the federal government or regional governments, doesn't matter. Okay. What are the other things that you can see that we ha need to accelerate, in fact, and to take the next step into a more uh, railroad transport and to cooperate with you? Yeah. I talked about uh, the, the mental click. The mental click has been made by uh, most of the transporters. Mm -hmm. Now, it's time to, to translate it into action. 
and it will be very important because I think everyone can see it. The congestion is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. and we are all, despite the road pricing, we are all stuck in traffic jams. Yeah, don't mention very frequently traffic jam. And yeah, every time uh, longer, and I don't think the situation will improve. You expect even a growth? On the contrary, yes. According to all forecasts, road transport will grow. Just like Minister Bellot told, uh, we talk about 27% uh, by 2040. That's 27%. impossible. Our roads are that's not uh, equipped for that one. Indeed, that's impossible. And on the other hand, there will be major uh, work works, uh, road works in and around Antwerp. I think my message today is we must even more focus on model complementarity. We are all partners. Mm -hmm. And that's a deal of everybody. Everybody should participate, I understand. Indeed. Okay, thank you very much. That's a really nice uh, message. And my key takeaways, ladies and gentlemen, are that we need the right conditions as well as collaboration between all the key stakeholders. Thank you very much, Philippe. Ladies and gentlemen, besides collaboration, innovation and digitalization are key as well. And therefore, we have exact one person who could elaborate on that one. Please welcome, live from Vienna, Mr. First of the European Rail Freight Coalition and CEO of the Rail Cargo Group. Please welcome Mr. Forst. <laughs> Hello everyone, a uh, very warm welcome from Vienna. I hope everybody can hear me, um, but as long as I don't get a sign, I presume everybody's fine. Um, so let me quickly share my presentation. So here we are. So, um, it's an honor to be today to be at this conference, um, and it's even a greater honor to talk about Rail Freight Forward. Rail Freight Forward was founded um, pretty much uh, two years ago, um, and it was founded essentially by all the relevant players in the European rail freight industry. So you, you can see our logo map, um, you can see sort of the major players, both um, state-owned and, and private. Um, and you can see um, at the bottom um, with ERFA, USC, and CR, um, you can see also the major industry associations um, um, active. So essentially, you can say that's really the coalition um, of the European rail freight sector. Um, and we have been very active since then. Um, one, one instance where you might have noticed us was NOAA's train, which was running through Europe um, in 2019, the world's largest um, artwork um, where we equipped essentially a full block train with containers which were beautifully designed um, and had stations um, in, in the major capitals um, in all in all capitals with really significant political contribution and we were there really really um, uh, pulling attention towards towards rail freight and towards what rail freight can do for society. Um, so why Rail Freight Forward uh, and why is our job um, in the rail freight industry more than just a really cool, interesting and sexy job? Um, it is more because we have a purpose and it's, it's more because we have a purpose uh, which, is, which is very much um, up to date. Um, you all know the discussion about climate change. Yes, currently COVID is, is sort of the, the prime topic, but, um, but um, as COVID sort of um, becomes normality, the whole topic of climate change will definitely be um, uh, top of mind again. Um, and uh, essentially to meet the Green Deal aims, we significantly have to reduce CO2 emissions as a society. Um, knowing that uh, trade, freight transport uh, accounts for approximately 10% um, of um, emissions, uh, it is very clear that working on in the transport sector um, is definitely very important to really reach this target. And it's sort of also a lever which can be pulled rather easily because currently we rely on uh, road freight transport for approximately three quarter of the volume. Yeah. Um, and 
So that's already now a huge burden leading to this 10% of emissions. But if you then sort of project forward and, and transport growth is expected to be approximately 30% um, until 2030, that will definitely um, uh, that will definitely be a situation which is not sustainable, neither um, to maintain the status quo and definitely not to reach the European Green Deal targets. So what's the solution? Um, the solution is more freight on rail. Um, very important at that point. Um, we don't see this as a fight, as a tug of war between road and rail, right? Both modes of transport have their advantages. Road is, is definitely superior on shorter distances for smaller volumes, for high flexibility. Rail is unbeatable, longer distances, uh, large volumes, and, and the more planable, the better. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's mainly about what we call multimodality, about really combining the strengths of both modes of transport. But in the end, obviously arriving at a state where uh, not 75% of the transport volume is transported on road. And the reasons um, I think um, um, many of you know, um, it always starts with the energy efficiency. Even if you use green energy, as we, as, as we do in Austria, um, at, at least and in Germany, when we run our trains, but as in most important part is, we use a factor of six less energy to transport a ton kilometer. Simple logic, steel on steel rolls way better than uh, rub on asphalt. And then even the energy we use is an electric energy, which um, in some countries like Austria is already predominantly re renewable in other countries will become. And therefore you have a, a significant positive effect um, on CO2, um, if you talk about the Green Deal, but also on other emissions. Um, and uh, in parallel, you have, you have huge uh, fringe benefits um, with regard to, to um, congestion costs, with regard to, to transport safety and so on and so forth. So big question, what's necessary, right? Why don't we really get better? Why haven't we gotten further as a, as, 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 as a rail freight sector or as a society, as an economy? Um, especially knowing that the trucker par paradise US has 50% model share of rail, right? We have something like 18 in Europe. So three, three very important levers to pull. First of all, we have to get better as a sector. Lots of stuff has happened and we are very proud of that in the, in the last years. However, we all know that the glass is half full by now, but there is still a uh, long way to go to really make uh, the rail freight sector a modern um, um, sector addressing customer needs as they, as they uh, deserve. So there is still homework on our side. But then even if we do a perfect job on the homework side, right? We as a sector, we don't have a fighting chance um, because what we need is we need a high performing infrastructure. Um, so running a train through Europe should be as easy as running a truck. And we need a level playing field, meaning that uh, the regulatory environment is leveled and um, um, the same kinds of, 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 of economic boundary conditions apply to all of us. So I'm going quickly because I'm, I'm, I'm down to 10 minutes and I'm, I definitely want to to arrive at that chart because apart from really working as a sector, working with infrastructure providers and working with the authorities, the Green Deal now sort of opened the door to really introduce game-changing new technologies. Yeah? And we are in close contact um, with the European Commission, we are in close contact with the Shift to Rail um, um, initiative, which is essentially the, the vehicle of the European Commission to fund um, to fund initiatives um, targeting and shifting volumes to rail. And there are five essentially groundbreaking and game-changing technologies which we are currently pushing the European rail traffic management system. Again, if you think about uh, air freight or not only air freight, air traffic, that's something which is uh, completely completely standard in, in, in rail freight. We still have many, many national operators which, which use very different um, ways of operating the network. Uh, we are planning ahead on autonomous train operation, um, targeting digital, ca digital capacity management to really essentially the target is to be able to accommodate the growth in rail freight volume due to, to market growth, but also due to shift to rail predominantly on the existing infrastructure by just using digitalization to increase um, um, essentially capacity and, and, and uh, yeah, um, and then very importantly, and the last two are, are now more on the side of the, of the railway undertakings, that's digital platforms, um, 
meaning connecting us as railway operators amongst each other so that our customers have up-to-date information at, at any point in time. So really exchanging operational information across the sector. That's the first thing where we will be heavily involved as a sector. And the second is digital automatic coupling. Um, for those who are not that deeply um, into railway operations. Um, Europe is next to North Korea, the only region in the world where we still have screw coupling, which means you have between two wagons, there are these, these, these big buffers and then there's essentially a, a screw connection which has to be operated manually. Um, the rest of the world, um, same as passenger traffic, operates with, with central buffer coupling. That's a, that's a normal, that's a one coupler in the middle, um, which is same same time automatic, which allows to, to have electricity and data connection, which is then a real enabler for the intelligent freight wagon, for the intelligent train, and then ultimately for the autonomous train operation. So that's really something that we, that, that's really a sort of a, a basket of technologies that we weren't um, sort of really hoping to be able to dream about uh, two years ago before this this whole uh, Fridays for Future, Greta Thunberg, Green Deal discussion came up. Now sort of with this door open, with really the awareness um, of the impact of, of, of climate change, with sort of the awareness we also helped to raise for what rail freight can do to address the topic. Um, we are currently working uh, due to COVID a bit behind the scenes still, but we are closely working with the Commission to really push these five technologies forward. Yep, obviously um, it also needs a business case so that the five technologies that I was, was just introducing, they would require approximately 18 billion euros um, investment. I know 18 billion euros is a much, but um, in the context of the Green Deal, we are discussing um, way larger numbers. So within the, green, the whole Green Deal budget, that's, um, that's, we believe, a digestible number. What you do get on the other side, so the 18 billion is a one-time investment. Um, what you get um, in return is a 25 billion euro investment per year, um, essentially avoidance of external costs being CO2 emissions, being other emissions, being road congestion, being a bit um, accident costs, so the things that I mentioned before. So, the conclusion um, and, and, and the logo that you will see in the future is this 18 billion, 25 billion. Essentially, we are asking European Commission, society, economy for a one-time investment for 18 billion to be able to return 25 billion per year um, going forward. I think that's, that's um, as good as any business case can get. Um, we are extremely confident that we will make lots of headway in the coming months in terms of commitment and in coming years in terms of implementation. Um, and with that, I hope um, I stayed within my 10 minutes time limit and hand back to the organizers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. First. You did a great job. And I remember that we will save a lot of money with this modal shift and that we need more rail freight as a solution. And indeed, uh, innovation is top priority for the rail freight sector in Europe. Talking about innovation, ladies and gentlemen, our next keynote speaker is dealing with it day and night as well. As the executive director of Shift to Rail, that's the Rail Innovation Company Agency, which is a joint venture between the the European Commission and the private sector. I'm pleased to welcome Carlo Borghini. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm really glad uh, to be here and especially I'm glad to be at this point of uh, this uh, morning dedicated to uh, rail freight uh, because uh, uh, you, we have moved from a specific project where we show the benefit that innovation and technology can introduce have been demonstrated and clearly uh, shown that can be achieved and touched. We had the presentation of the policy environment about the targets and now Clemens, and thank you Clemens for this, you have uh, set the scene on the convergence that we have at European level about the objective to be achieved. And I think this is really where I will focus. And my, the title of the presentation is really what we want to deliver because research innovation is a key enabler to have impact on people in the future. And the impact, as Clement says, is uh, socio-economic growth, is impact on sustainability and so on and so on. So we are now at uh, the beginning of a process that will uh, deliver a, 
uh, the agenda of President von der Leyen of the European Commission. Uh, she presented the European Green Deal as a, a paramount element to achieve a sustainable uh, economy uh, and especially inside this sustainable transport and mobility. There is a key sentence to ensure that a large part of the 75% of land transport should be uh, moved towards more sustainable transport like rail and uh, uh, inland waterways. But it's not only the key policy is combined with uh, the digital e era, is combined with uh, industrial policy, is combined with a strong Europe around the world. And once we have looked at these policies, we are designing also how the next shift to rail program that will, uh, is expected to start in 2021 can support rail to be a serv much more service oriented and meet the expectation of the clients. Because this is, is where we can be of uh, key and essential importance. And as uh, uh, you will see, uh, we are focusing on the same key elements that Clemens has mentioned. The integrated European uh, transport network is a fundamental component. Rail is a system of system and should be dealt by in a full integrated approach. Multimodality. We have seen also uh, before in the presentation of the project how it is essential and strong to ensure that different modes of transport are working together. It is not a question of competition, it is a question of collaboration to maximize the performance of the system. And finally is delivering the competitiveness of the European industry, the European rail industry, is jobs, is growth, is the future uh, of the future generation. And especially in this uh, uh, pandemic has been demonstrated the strength of European uh, rail network and the capacity to deliver and to meet the expectation uh, also in a, one of the most important crises that uh, at global level uh, we lived in the past month. So what does it mean concretely to, uh, to deliver this? As uh, Clemens mentioned, uh, we are focusing on one specific uh, activity inside the future research innovation program that will be dedicated to freight. Uh, and it's not something that comes from uh, as new, but it's coming from the work that has been achieved in the current uh, shift to rail uh, joint undertaking programs. Uh, and one key example that I would like to mention is simply uh, the uh, change that happened uh, in, in the program where we move from research innovation done on the uh, automatic coupler, we move to a research innovation on a digital automatic coupler. We have also one of them coming from the work that is done inside Shift to Rail uh, by some key uh, members. And now we are starting and we'll have the next meeting soon, the new uh, uh, European digital automatic coupler delivery program because we believe that we can bring the solution to the market during the next decade. As Clemens said, it's the only continent around the world that we, where we don't have it. But we don't go for the automatic coupler, we are going to include energy and data in the connections. The next uh, generation of the shift to rail program so will be dedicated to research innovation. This is a series of projects that are started to be shaping uh, in uh, the the work we are doing together with the sector. One is full dedicated to the green freight logistic chain. And we don't talk anymore about only rail freight, we talk at logistic chain. Rail will be the key elements in this logistic chain and we new, make use of all the digital solution, automation, but also uh, technological solution, uh, operational solution to break down the barriers that don't allow chain to maximize the benefit for the society. But all the other list that you have here in, in, in this uh, uh, table shows the fact that we are working with a system approach to address all the rail system with a uh, encompassing vision. And for this, we will have the support of all uh, the uh, key uh, companies in Europe, the key players in our Europe. It will be essential the participation of infrastructure manager and operating community. The setup of the next uh, generation of shift to rail will be allowing the participation of all the key actors in different type of form in a manner that uh, they will be able to participate based on their interest. The alignment of industrial strategic policies uh, and the industrial 
policy of the company is fundamental. Race Research Innovation is here and with the support of the European Union to address European policies because they are answering the needs of the people. And in this respect, rail freight is one of the key components of the next exercise. And I want to show also a bit about the governance of the next uh, generation of the partnership, especially to show the last part of this. You will see a yellow pillar and a blue pillar where we look uh, and we move forward in the direction of defining a system approach to rail. As Clemens mentioned in the five technologies, the five technologies mentioned by Clemens show clearly the need to ensure that these technologies are working to together. A system like rail requires this essential work done up front, but those participating in this. And this is the reason why we are developing this system pillar that will be input and providing uh, uh, a concept of operation for the development of the technology that will be underpinning the future generation. And I would like to conclude only to say that as has been said also before and Indra mentioned a few times also in our intervention, the key element to have a new rail operations in the future is working together. Working together with the rail sector, working together with the clients, working together with the logistic value chain, working together with the passenger, because only via the strong collaboration will be able to address uh, the needs of the society. Thank you very much. Indra, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Borghini. A lot of transforming projects I've heard, and we need that common goal and common visions. Ladies and gentlemen, with those keynotes, we are almost at the end of this virtual seminar. For the most important keynotes, key takeaways, I would like to give the floor to Geert Powels, CEO of Linneas. Geert, the floor is yours. Thank you, Indra. I must say this conference has been a real joy for me. Of course, because we've been able to present our innovation project that we developed together with our partners, and that was great, and it really shows potential for the future. But actually, it's even more a joy, because I've heard a real mental shift going on. And we've said it a lot of times, that there's a really a, a shift in the mindset. More and more people want to go towards a modal shift from road to rail. And this time, it's not just me saying this or other people in the rail freight sector. It's actually being pronounced by industry leaders. It's being pronounced by politicians, by the ports, by many people, even by the transport sector. So that's great to hear. And we do this because we really believe it is a future, because we will have much more stable and robust supply chains and better working supply chains because of that, because we can contribute to climate objectives in that way, and also because we will solve our mobility problems this way. So we all want to go for rail as a backbone in a new, smart, multimodal transport system. That's great. Now, we've seen innovations like uh, shown today. I mean, they are going to be key to make this happen. And not just the ones that we had um, here promoted as a project, but also the ones that Clemens uh, discussed with, uh, and, and Carlo discussed with uh, the DAC and so on. All these projects, they're really going to make sure that rail become, will become way more competitive. And that's crucial. And by the way, I heard that in the chat there was uh, one of the questions is, has rail already uh, come up with any innovations? Well, I could just think of one thing that we, for example, did. I mean, we invented a new what we call railway product. Uh, it's not a technological innovation, but it's more a business model innovation. Th these mixed trains with intermodal and conventional put together in a really great offering. I mean, it has been one of the innovations that we put into the market and which is showing a potential for modal shift. And we're going to continue to do these kinds of innovations as well, not only the technological innovations. Now, innovation is crucial, but it's not going to be sufficient to realize a modal shift. If we really want to make a shift happening, we're also going to need the very explicit contribution from the government and from infrastructure managers as crucial stakeholders to make this happen. As Clemens has shown, there's a rail freight companies that need to do their work, that's us, and we're doing that. On top of that, we need a clear policy from the government and also from the infrastructure manager. They're crucial to reach our reliability level. And we actually see this happening in a lot of countries. I mean, with, in Austria, obviously, it's happening. Also, in Switzerland, there have been policies there for tens of years to 
promote modal shift, and they're reaching levels at 40%, 30 to 40% of share of rail freight in, in the overall freight transport system. So it is possible if you really get the governments and the infrastructure managers behind it. Also recently, we've seen it in Germany, they decided to have a master plan for rail freight in Germany. In the Netherlands, that quickly followed Germans' plans. And even in France, we have recently seen with the announcement of the Plan de Relance, and even Macron is speaking about this, uh, they're going for a master plan of rail freight in France. Where is Belgium? And wh when I hear all these people saying we need to do this, well, l let's also get our act together. Belgium is a logistics country. Logistics is crucial for the ports, for the industry. We cannot stay behind. We also need a real master plan for rail freight. And I'm not talking about a mediocre plan. I mean, we've had our times with lukewarm plans, with, with, with half-hearted ideas. We need to be bold and ambitious. We really need to make the modal shift happening this time. And we want to call on a coalition of the willing to elaborate, to co-create in the next coming months a master plan for rail freight in Belgium as well. And so I'm happy to announce that this month we will start with these works, we will start with the co-creation of the master plan rail freight. And we aim to have a, a really ambitious plan by December. And I call upon all of you to contribute to this, and I actually also can invite you already to the VBO um, conference on the 14th of December where we will come with this end product. It's still for us to make together, but let's make it ambitious. Let's make it happen. It will make a difference for not only for the rail freight sector, but for the industry, for the ports, for the government, for the entire society. Let's do this. And in the meantime, until then, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Heers. I keep in mind that we uh, cannot stay behind as a, a country and that we need to be bold. We need to have an ambitious uh, master plan. In the meanwhile, uh, Yves Verschuur, Managing Director of Essentia, is sitting with me. I heard a lot of positive vibes today. Are you a happy man when you hear this? The answer is very straightforwardly yes. Um, it is very good to hear a strong engagement, a strong willingness to move ahead with a very important topic. Uh, so yes, I'm happy. Uh, at the same time, shall I say, I don't think I'm anxious, but I'm certainly uh, willing to move on now. Mm -hmm. um, there is to me, in, in all what is being said, a real call to action. Uh, we have been talking about many of the subjects which we've heard about uh, this morning already for a long time. And the reality is that we still are where we are, and the prospects are perhaps not always all that bright. So something fundamental needs to happen. Yeah, so this is the end of a study, but it's in the meantime a start, a beginning of something new, a call for action that you're doing. Well, I think yes, so. And I believe that the call which uh, we just heard from Geert Powell's is really a demand to all of us uh, to really now move on and get our shoulders behind this master plan. Um, so, of course, as usual, we will then ask to the authorities to step in. Um, but in my opinion, yes, they need to play a role. If they have to play a role, in my opinion, it's most importantly uh, to give more attention to um, um, the freight on the rail, not just to the passenger issues, because very often that is also where we suffer, because it's always the passenger traffic that gets the priority, perhaps understandably, uh, but we need to have more attention to, to um, the freight transport. Um, but I believe that the biggest call is to um, the operating partners themselves. Mm -hmm. um, We've got to come up with a credible plan. Um, the rail operators, the industry, um, we together, the innovators who bring all sorts of innovative solutions which are great. Uh, but we've got to come up with a plan which is going to be different from what we've done before, credible, so that policymakers can then step in. Yeah, and who should take the lead in all that? Because we've heard the industry, we've heard everything from a European uh, perspective. Who should take the lead for that math master plan? I think that you're using exactly the, the right term, Indra. It is about leadership. Um, so who should take the lead? I don't think it is with, it is not with one single party alone. One party alone cannot change this reality. Uh, what we really need is 
I believe, a higher level involvement um, in in the many pieces of this integrated chain. Uh, we need higher level involvement in the industry. Uh, we certainly need also in associations. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at them myself. Um, but we also need it um, at the side of the, the rail operators. Um, so I think we've got to recognize that we've got fantastic people working with us. So we, we heard lots of them before. We have experts who understand the issues, who know what has to happen. So it is, I believe, a, a leadership issue now to really take this up and to transform all the good ideas, all the good intentions into reality on the ground. So, but now we have to have concrete actions and that's something of everybody. Everybody should do that. Everybody should cooperate. Well, that's what I would say. Yes, it's a lot of hard work. Let's also recognize this. It will not happen by itself. And what are the next steps then? Uh, well, I uh, believe that it has been said by here before, there is this master plan initiative which is uh, starting as we speak. Um, I think we should really look at this opportunity to, to kickstart the process of change. I think it needs to happen in our minds first. We need to have this willingness to not only defend where we know that we are right, we've got to listen to where the others perhaps are, have also a point, how we can integrate much more the positions from different angles, because as it was also rightly said by Febetra, mm -hmm. um, road has the advantage of being very low cost, being very flexible. So the competitor is there, he's well organized, so we need to think really hard how we can change the way in which things are happening now to our advantage by giving um, rail freight a, a much higher uh, order of a priority. Yeah, and Essentia and Linnaeus as well can uh, play that role of bridge builders. Thank you very much, Yves Verschuren, ladies and gentlemen. With those wise words, we are at the end of this virtual conference. As I understood, there were a lot of questions in the chat box. We will come back to that later in person. And when you want to re-see, re-watch uh, this conference, that's possible on the website. You can find all information also on www.lessthanwagonload.eu. As for me, I hope you found it as interesting as I did. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye.